I guess some breaking news coming out of the, the federal government. The Justice Department announcing that four former Louisville police officers now are facing federal charges in that drug raid that led to Breonna Taylor's death in the year 2020. The charges include civil rights offenses, unlawful conspiracies, unconstitutional use of force, and obstruction offenses. The federal charges allege that police officers falsified the affidavit used to obtain the search warrant of Breonna Taylor's home and that this act violated federal civil rights laws resulting of course that search warrant resulted in her death because that is when the altercation took place. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland said in a news conference moments ago that federal officials quote share but cannot fully imagine the grief felt by Taylor's family and that Breonna Taylor should be alive today. Let's bring back in Ann Bremner, who uh, represents uh, police officers on, on many occasions in the Seattle, Washington area. Surprised, Ann, uh, remember, Hankinson is one of the officers, Brett Hankinson. We watched that trial play out here on Court TV, and he was right. acquitted by a jury. Uh, your thoughts on this move by the feds? Well, it's not surprising, first of all, Ted, to see a federal civil rights investigation and, and or charges um, after a state prosecution of an officer, you know, fails in terms of getting a conviction. We saw that, that kind of procedure in Rodney King. We've seen it in Derek Chauvin's matter with uh, George Floyd. So it doesn't surprise me to see that the, the federal feds have stepped in and taken this on with four officers where one has been acquitted previously, the others weren't charged in any kind of state case. It took, a time, it took a long time. That kind of surprised me that it took this long. This case has been scrutinized. They're talking about false statements in search warrants. That's what the civil rights charges really pertain to from what I can see so far in terms of breaking news. You know, if that's the case, that's something they knew a long time ago, presumably. Um, but the fact is when there are false statements in a search warrant, that's a very, very serious matter and should be considered for prosecution. My own surprise here is, is what, what took so long? Um, yeah, Kelly Goodlett, Joshua Janes, Kyle Meany, and Brett Hankinson are the officers and former officers that uh, have uh, are facing these charges. What it'll be interesting to see is um, Hankinson was, of course, the individual that shot the fatal round and killed Breonna Taylor. To what degree did he have to do with the search warrant? Um, would will be interesting because yeah I get right. the I get the the the, the two that right away were identified as the ones that falsified the affidavit to get the search warrant for Breonna Taylor's apartment. Right. But once that's done, um, if I'm one of the officers responding, and we, we know what happened, the first shots that were fire, fired came from her apartment towards police. Hankinson was yes. tried, um, found not guilty for uh, wanton endangerment charges. The, um, I don't know. It, to me, that's the surprising part of it, that Hankinson, unless he had something to do with that affidavit with the search warrant. Well, he, you're exactly right, but, but here's the only other theory I can see, and that is for his involvement to be um, based, uh, basis for a charge. There was some reference to some obstruction after the fact or misrepresentations about the search warrants itself. So there could be those involved in the drafting of the warrant and, and misrepresenting allegedly information that the judge had issuing a warrant and they could execute it. What about after the fact? I mean, what if there was some kind of issue with respect to what some of these officers did after the fact in representing the search warrant or in utilizing it in some way? I don't know. But that's the only possible way I could see him involved because we have no information, like you said, that he was involved in the first instance in the drafting of that warrant with its misinformation, it's alleged. Yeah, and a jury believed that his actions, uh, although very unfortunate mm -hmm. and horrible, um, in the yeah. heat of the moment, they, they believed that he was, mm -hmm. he should be exonerated uh, or not found guilty. The uh, She was 26 years old when she died in 2020, and uh, it was it is one of those cases where you're just, ugh feel so horrible she's uh, you know wor working in the medical field and uh, had nothing to do with um, anything wrong and and she catches a bullet um, and dies because of it um, the time you you mentioned how long it took um, it, it's it's interesting that it what would it what would take this long um, and Give us a sense of what in, in Fed land, where they always win once they get you in trial. Um, what, does it take, what does it take to get here? 
Um, and why do you think, if you opine about it, does it get political? Is there someone signing off on this? That um, it's going, if it, is, is it veering out of the Justice Department into politics? You know, I, I, I represent so many police officers and I have for decades here in Seattle and Portland, county officers, city officers, et cetera, that I tend to see things, of course, through that lens. But and I see things as getting more and more political in these types of cases. This case is a true tragedy. Um, it's, it's one that's, of course, fact-based. We've got, of course, all kinds of movements against the police or defunding the police or scrutinizing the police all over the country. But that plays in, at least from my prism or perspective, more and more these days. Of course, justice is what we're all looking for, whether it's through politics, court systems, etc. But I think in a, in a case like this, they had to run it through a grand jury. They had were issuing subpoenas out of, a, out of a grand jury. And so that's what took so long, I believe. Yeah, sounds good. Ann Brunner, thank you for your expertise. We appreciate it. Thanks. We're going to take a break.